Hey everyone, welcome to Cricket Swag Game Day, presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar. I'm Tali Carr in Atlanta. It has all come down to this, Southern University versus Jackson State Swag Championship. Winner goes on to the Celebration Bowl to take on North Carolina Central University, who's already waiting, practicing, and preparing. Some people say that's a little advantage. I won't get into it. <laughs> but we're going to get into all of the football today, plus hear from the SWAC Commissioner, Dr. Charles McClellan. Today's show is brought to you by Cricket. Smile, your own cricket. Pepsi Zero Sugar, official partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Before we talk about Saturday's game, let's relive the drama that got us up to this point. Going into the Bayou Classic, if Southern University did not win its annual grudge match against the Grambling, Prairie View A&M was going to return to the SWAC championship game. For Southern, it was simple. Win, and you're in. Let's go back to the Bayou. This SWAC recap is brought to you by General Motors, official sponsor of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Pick it up in the Superdome, New Orleans, Bayou Classic, Grambling State strikes first. Julian Calvez finds Lyndon Rash. Four-yard touchdown, seven-zip Grambling. Southern responds in the second quarter, Carl Ligon. Two-yard run, 7-7 seven -seven ball game. Grambling responds with a field goal to go up 10-7. But Southern comes right back, right before the half. Kendrick checked the rhymes, a five-yard touchdown. His name is Kendrick Grimes in Southern. Up 14-10 at the break. Third quarter, Grambling not done. Calvez, a one-yard run. That caps off a nine-play, 94-yard drive, 17-14 Grambling. All the way into the fourth quarter, B. Sean McCray with the go-ahead touchdown run for 22 yards. That puts Southern up 21 to 17, and the Jaguars lay it on after that. Jordan Carter, a 48-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown, and now Southern finds themselves up 28 to 17, and the icing on the cake. A 42-yard pick six, Christian Davis. Talk about the defense of Southern saving the day. They go on to win it over Grambling, 34-17. Hey, let's interrupt the show real quick here for the first time this season. A little bit of breaking news. The postseason awards for the Southwestern Athletic Conference are in. We now know the players of the year, the coach of the year. First team swag, second team swag. Let's get right to it. Taking a look at player of the year. That award goes to Shador Sanders out of Jackson State University. He's the quarterback. You know the numbers that he has had. His teammate, Aubrey Miller Jr., Defensive Player of the Year. Alcorn State's Jarvion Howard, Newcomer of the Year. Jackson State's Kevin Coleman Jr., Freshman of the Year. He's a wide receiver. And Jackson State's Deion Sanders, Coach of the Year. So that is one, two, three, four awards for the top, top honors of the conference going to Jackson State University. All right, we're going to put it on the screen here. We have a lot of names. Let's look at our all SWAC first team offense. All SWAC first team defense. All SWAC first team for the specialist. Second team, all SWAC offense. Second team, all SWAC defense. And second team, all SWAC specialist. And of course, for this complete list, if you want to break it down, just go to SWAC.org. All right, let's see if we can resume with our regularly scheduled program here on SWAC Game Day. So here we are. The postseason has officially begun. A look at the postseason schedule is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage for an expert partner to help buy your new home, Rocket Can. Saturday, December 3rd, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. Grab an early lunch on the West Coast. Jackson, Mississippi, live broadcast ESPN2. 
It's the SWAC championship game. Jackson State will host Southern University. The winner of that game will end its season in Atlanta on December 17th with the Celebration Bowl. The SWAC champion will take on North Carolina Central University. It's a 12 p.m. kickoff. Jackson State and Southern has met already. Already met one time this year. Let's take a look at how things went. It was a big day. It was ESPN on the scene. College game day. Jackson State, big. You didn't have to watch the game, but when you look at the score, it is what it is. All right, so we saw the outcome of the first game. They're going to meet a second time. Lots to talk about here. Let's start with Southern University. Head coach Eric Dooley. The Jaguars lost to Jackson State. You just saw how all that went down. So how can Southern reverse course from that outcome? Well, we got to come out and we got to execute at a high level. And, and when we're executing at a high level for 60 minutes, I like our chances. So we know the things that we have to correct, and that's what we're working on. Uh, as we speak. So we just got to continue to keep working and keep grinding and, and um, got to take place on Saturday. We'll see how, how, how the chips fall. Deion Sanders, head coach of Jackson State, up next on the microphone. Your team beat Southern coach 35-0. Is it hard to beat a man, to beat a team twice? Could that be a challenge? And Southern played them once and uh, we won handily, but that does not mean anything. This is playoffs and anything can happen. But we just want to happen what happened previously. So that's the way we're going at it. We want them to remember that whooping. We want them to remember how they perform. We, we want them to remember that. But we also, we also want them to uh, perfect what we did last time when we played against, these, uh, against this team. We don't want them to forget everything. We want them to understand the feeling of, of walking on and off that field in dominance. So they, we don't want them to forget everything. All right, back to Coach Dooley. You prepared for this. Last year, you were the coach at Prairie View A&M. You've been here before. Does that offer any advantages, that different look, that different set of lens? Any disadvantages, advantages? Let us know. Well, you know, you say an advantage. Uh, I guess it's an advantage for both of us because he had to prepare uh, for us as well. Uh, it's a uh, yeah, different team, but... Uh, pretty much the same scheme, so it's no different. Uh, so it's no advantage. I, I think it's uh, what you do now. Uh, that's why we use that acronym, uh, WIN. What's important now? That's what's important right now, that we prepare for a great football team. That uh, Obviously, they're a great football team. They're 11-0. and they, they haven't lost a game this year and playing at a high level. And number one in probably every category that you, you try to uh, categorize. So we do know the challenges and we know what we have to do. But we, of course, we're going to always love our chances. We have an opportunity. Uh, so uh, the things that uh, that we have to prepare for are, are advantages. I don't look at advantages. I just say you just got to go out and execute at a high level. All right, sticking with Coach Dooley, Jaguar Nation wants a win. They want it bad. I know you do as well. One more thought, Coach, on the SWAC championship. The thing about it, uh, the momentum, we just got to continue to go. When our defense is playing at a high level, it gives us a, a, a great chance of winning the ball game. And then 
course, offensively, we got to put the ball in, in the end zone. That's what it all comes down to, scoring points. Uh, so uh, I do like the way that we finished the game. Uh, still some work to do, and, and that's what this week here uh, will take care of. Okay, let's get back to Coach Sanders. Now, we know this guy all too well, right, at this point in the season. But tell us again, one more time, what will Coach Prime be preaching to his team? Our young men, as well as coaches, as well as training staff, uh, equipment staff, and everyone in-house remains focused on the main thing. The main thing is dominating for 60 minutes on Saturday. That's the thing. Don't start thinking about the Celebration Bowl. Don't start thinking about these achievement and postseason awards. Focus on the job at hand. That's the main thing. And we got to keep the main thing the main thing. All right. A lot of talk there. Are you excited? Are you ready to play? Well, watch. Okay. No one's wanting to see us play. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. <laughs> but seriously, there is other news out there within the SWAC community. Deion Sanders remains a hot commodity amongst teams that have an open position for a head football coach. During Monday's press availability, Kendrick Marshall from HBCU Sports asked Coach Prime about it, and he did not shy away from his answer at all. Yeah, Coach, um, over the weekend, Pete Thamel with uh, Fox Sports reported that uh, Colorado had made you an offer to become their next head coach. Mm -hmm. How um, true is their report, and is there any mutual interest between you and the school? Yeah, definitely. The report is true. Um, they're not the only ones. The report is true. I'm not going to sit on here and tell all my business, but they're not the only ones. And I would be a, a liar if I told you they didn't. You know they did. I know they did. Everybody there know they did. So it is what it is. That's not uh, my focus right now. My focus is to to win and to be dominant and then to to uh, not even to go on to the to there the celebration bowl. My focus is right here in this beloved stadium to be dominant on Saturday. That's my focus. And I keeps the main thing the main thing. And everyone that knows me know that about me. I have an innate ability to focus and keep the main thing the main thing. So a lot of the conversation around coaches being in demand always centers around what? The money, right? All right, it's got to be more money, more money, more money. Got to be the money, must be the money. But when you talk about money in college athletics at the FCS level, the SWAC is in a very solid position. Now, don't take it from me. Don't believe what I say. Hear it from the man himself, Commissioner Dr. Charles McClellan. Revenue is up. Revenue is up significantly. Uh, I've said this before, and I say it now. We are not the small black college for conference anymore. We are a legitimate force. Our revenue numbers are uh, tracking extremely strong. Uh, I have not seen the other FCS conferences revenue this year, but based upon last year's numbers, uh, we will rank first of all of FCS. Given where we are with our television contracts in five years, we will actually surpass two FBS conferences. Again, they might have the ability to up their numbers. Uh, we are going to enter, uh, we have three more years left on our ESPN contract where we're start to enter negotiations with ESPN. So we think that we are in a very positive position uh, to elevate this conference, to be able to do some things that people have never been able uh, to see. We distributed uh, over $9 million last year. We got the final numbers in. That does not include uh, allowing Jackson State to keep all of the revenue uh, from the championship level. When you look at distribution to our membership, we have distributed more than all FCS conferences. So uh, James asked that question before, and I've had to say this publicly, people talk about uh, people coming in, but what about schools leaving? Uh, we can honestly say, if there is a institution that want to leave the SWAC, they would have to go power five, because there's no other conference that they can get as much revenue distribution from the SWAC. That's how strong we are and our revenue projections are trending, you know, upward. Uh, so when you start talking about what's next, it is to continue to deliver to our fans a quality product. Uh, it is to continue to deliver the revenue that our member institutions need so they can do things such as not having to play all of these types of game guarantees, being able to travel uh, in, a, in a first class manner. That's what conference offices are for. And I am proud to say 
that in four years, we've been able to elevate our revenue structure to where we're now distributing legitimate, serious money back to our schools where they can do some of those things. All right, the commission touched on several subjects on Monday, including the conversation surrounding FAMU not making the playoffs and how other conferences might actually be interested in more of this bowl type activity, some bowl scenarios at the FCS level. More now from Dr. McClellan. There's only two FCS conferences that are eligible to play in a bowl game. That's the SWAC and the Act. And it took special legislation to do so. Uh, right now, the Transformation Committee for the NCAA is going through their process. Uh, the NCAA is going to look a lot different uh, once this process is done. So now is the time that if we want to get anything done to propose uh, getting those things done. But I can tell you, I've had other conferences to reach out wanting to participate. You know, there's been this debate about FCS playoff celebration ball. I can tell you there are many conferences that are saying behind the scenes that they would much rather play in some type of bowl game against the Southwestern Athletic Conference, that the revenue is there and the opportunity to win a national championship is very enticing uh, for those types of institutions. And at the end of the day, it's coming down to revenue. So when you talk about Florida a and you talked about, you know, what that entails, you know, in order to host uh, a FCS championship, the minimum bid is 30000 That's not going to get you a game. You're going to be with somewhere between the fifty, eighty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 range. And then a percentage of that revenue has to go back to the NCAA. And then if you have to leave, you have to pay all of your expenses to go. So let's just say family hosted. You know, they were going to be out of fifty dollars to $80,000 to host whatever it costs for them to go play that following week. So let's say they made it to the national championship game. It could have cost them upwards of $250,000, uh, Again, it's important to be able to play for a national championship. I'm not taking that away, but we have made the decision that the Celebration Bowl is the route that we want to go. We want to be like the SEC and the Big Ten uh, and the Pac-12. We want to be able to compete in a bowl game and compete at the highest level. So getting multiple bowl games is definitely our priority. Um, and I don't know, I can't say it's not imminent. It's not tomorrow. It's not next week. It's going to take some time. But in this new structure of the NCAA, I can tell you 100% we are in the middle of it. We have a voice and we will continue to exert our voice to be able to move our uh, agenda forward and try to get some of the things that we would like to have. So, thank you, Dr. McClellan. For those of you fans out there, your school didn't make it to the SWAG championship game. I know. I know the feeling. But it's already time to get ready for next season. We got recruiting right here. Early recruiting is underway. We got spring ball coming up. So, let's take a look at the final regular season standings from this year. Then we'll get on to next year. But let's see where your team finished. SWAC Standings brought to you by General Motors, official sponsor of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Perfection is still in the air for Jackson State. Will it continue this weekend against Southern? FAMU thought they had a postseason berth in the NCAA playoffs. A lot of people thought that they would as well, but ended unfortunately without one, but still a great season at 9-2 for FAMU. Alabama State, you see them 6-5 under Coach Eddie Robinson Jr. his first year. Alabama A&M, Bethune-Cookman, and Mississippi Valley State round out the SWAC East final regular season standings. Out West, well, on paper it looks like a tie at the top between Prairie View A&M and Southern, but Southern won the head-to-head -head tiebreaker, so they are going to the SWAC championship. There you have Texas Southern, Alcorn State, Grambling State, and Arkansas Pine Bluff rounding out the West. Well, that is it for this week's Cricket Swack Game Day presented to you by Pepsi Zero Sugar. Enjoy the Swack Championship game Saturday afternoon. Be at the vet or catch it on ESPN2. It's been a great football season. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be talking more basketball as time goes along, but a really big game this weekend. Winner goes to the Celebration Bowl. From Atlanta, I'm Tali Carr. We'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for your coming.